And so today I wanted to do a little something for, well, this is, the book is for couples, One Minute Romance for Couples um, by Grace Fox. But I think a lot of these things could also be used with your children um, or with um, other people that you and, you know, friends. Um, so even though it's meant for couples, and I hope you'll try it, um, it's really good for other relationships as well. So I just picked out a few for today. So these are little one minute romance for couples or one minute um bonding for families and friends. Okay, so we'll go with it that way. And the first one is, if you could remodel any room in your house, which one would you choose? Describe the completed look, including furniture. Now, Christopher and I always love um, kind of dreaming big. Um, sometimes he dreams big and he calls me his dream smasher because I, I try to inject a little reality in there. Um, I know he means it in love. It's not a bad thing. Maybe it is, um, but uh, we love dreaming about how we would love our home to look, what would be an ideal. Um, he loves dreaming about our yard, and um, so this is kind of a fun little exercise to do. Uh, the next one is, to what biblical character would you liken yourself and why? So I think this is interesting. Um, I used to do this in my English class. We would read a book and I would have the students write um, their essay about what character uh, they identify with and why. And so if you look through all your Bible stories, maybe, maybe think about your favorite Bible stories because there's something there tugging at you. Um, look at your Bible stories and think about what character is it that you identify with. Um, I, I talked about Mary and Martha lots. So I, ident I identify with Mary, um, but it's more because of, by default, I'm not a Martha. I really don't like the housework and the cooking. Um, I love uh, hostessing and, and, and having people over, um, but I don't like the day-to-day -day keeping up with house stuff. And so by default, I kind of have become more of a Mary because I would love to read much more than I would love to sweep the floor. And um, I would prefer to do a Bible study rather than clean the kitchen. So this is something that... Um, I have discovered about myself that I identify with Mary, but I also find that um, maybe my reasoning is ulterior. It's not as true and pure as, as Mary, so uh, I work on that as well. So anyway, it'd be fun to identify with a character. There are so many great characters in the Bible, and it'll get you thinking. It'll get your kids thinking. It'll be fun. Um, okay, the next one is, if your friends gave you an award, what would it be? So um, we used to be in a club and they would give out awards and it was so much fun trying to think of them, uh, come up with them. And, and a lot of times they were just really funny. Um, but if you're going to do this with your kids, I want to caution you um, and, and with your spouse and friends as well. I want to caution you that it's not funny to the point of being at their expense. Um, our children take in what we say about them. And I have found myself, I have found myself, you know, when I'm talking with friends and my kids are around thinking, gosh, why did I say it that way? I don't want her to think that that's how I really think of her. I was just trying to be funny. Um, and so I want you to be careful when you do that. Um, Christopher and I agreed early on in our marriage, for which I'm very thankful, to always try to build each other up, not tear each other down, both one-on-one -on -one and in front of others. And that has been greatly beneficial for us, um, something we've had to practice. And, uh, and and it comes naturally now, which is great. Uh, and and want to do that with my kids as well. Um, yes, my kids have certain tendencies. Lily tends to keep her room really messy. Emma's is very clean and structured. Um, she's strong-willed like me and Dossie is, uh, quiet, more quiet like I was when I was younger and Christopher was when he was younger. Uh, and his room is kind of a little messy too, but I don't want them to incorporate that as part of their identity. I don't want that negativity to be part of their identity. So I, I try to phrase it in terms of Lily's very creative and so is Dossie and that flows out into how they keep their room. Emma's very organized and structured and that flows out into how she keeps her room. So just think about your words and how you phrase things, um, when you do these awards. It can be a lot of fun. Um, here's another one. What comes to mind when you think about growing old together? So uh, this one, of course, would be great for your spouse um, or your friends. Um, I had a friend who one time sent me uh, a brochure and it showed uh, people at a retirement home on big rubber duckies in a pool. And, and I thought that was hilarious. I love that. And so we've joked about how retirement homes will be like college for um, for us when we're older. And um and then with our children, um, 
well, this one's really not for the children, but, but they kind of have already come up with a name for me, um, much to my chagrin. Uh, they intend to call me Granana Meemaw, which is all the names for a grandmother that they could think of and merged them together, and that's what they want to call me. And I told them if they want me to love their children, uh, they probably should think of another name. So we'll see how that works out. Um, so Christopher and I talked about being old together and, and hoping to have the privilege to do that. And uh, we joked about how we would be in our retirement homes, both of us in our own movable bed, uh, talking to each other and, and touching toes if we can reach that far. But uh, it's just interesting to think about that uh, kind of kind of sets a priority or a goal. All right. There's another one here that I thought was a lot of fun. It says, recall your most memorable Christmas. How old were you and what made it more memorable than others? And Christopher and I did this and we said it needed to be, uh, we did one for our childhood and then we did one as a family. And um, the childhood memory was so much fun because it, it really made us think through all our childhood Christmases. But surprisingly, it, there was one that just came to mind for me clearly. And, uh, and for Christopher, it was a couple, a conglomeration of a couple. So um, that's a great uh, conversation starter. And, um, I hope you'll try it. And then we also did it with our kids. You know, we told them our stories and then we asked them what their favorite Christmases were and why. And, um, and it's so much fun to see what they say. It really makes your heart warm. All right. So we have another one. This one is tell me how you learned to drive. Who taught you and what misadventures did you have? So um, this one's a lot of fun, too, because our spouses usually have not known who we were before college or adult years. Um, and so it's fun to kind of tell them those stories. And now I have two children driving. And so I have shared these stories with them as well. You know, my dad was the one to teach me to drive. And one time he was giving me instruction and I got so mad at him. I pulled over and made him drive because I was... I know it all at the time. So um, it's kind of fun to look back at that and think about that and share that with the kids and they get to see a different side of you. Um, and then for your spouse to hear their stories as well. Apparently, Christopher and Chip shared, a, or maybe, I don't know if they shared the car or if Chip just had the privilege of having the car, but it only made left turns or maybe it was only right turns. It would turn off if you did the wrong way. And so he had to cons come up with a route to school on using only right turns. And... Um, I think that's hilarious. I, that cracks me up. And, and I love to tell that to my kids too, because they're thinking they need a brand new car. And, you know, I'm like, no, you need a beater for posterity uh, to build character. Um, all right. There's one more. Describe a teacher or coach who made a positive impact on your life. And I like to try to point this out both to my spouse. You know, we've talked about this to friends um, and to my children, because I think it also impacts us as we have that opportunity to be a mentor for younger people as well. And so um, looking back at who my favorite teacher was and why, um, and I have always known my favorite teacher was in third grade. Her name was Mrs. Gordon, and she just, she built me up. She loved on me. She made me feel uh, very capable and proud of my abilities um, under her tutelage. And she always had a smile. And one of my favorite things was she read to us in class. And she really built up my love of books, which has continued to this day. And I even became an English teacher and, um, I love books myself now. And when I was a teacher, one of the things I loved to do was to read books to my class as well. The funny thing is I read to my high schoolers. I read children's books to my high schoolers and they loved them, even though, you know, it was way out of their uh, normal reading range. It was way lower, um, but they loved the stories. Uh, at least I think they did. Um, and then also as a teacher, it means, you know, it helps to think of what qualities were important so that I can be very thoughtful about who I am as a teacher and a mentor. So these are fun to listen to uh, or to, to talk about as well. And um, that's a few for today. I hope you'll enjoy them. I hope you'll try them out, maybe one a day or a couple at dinner. Um, and I uh, want to give credit where credit is due. One Minute Romance for Couples by Grace Fox. But I really think these are excellent for your children and friends as well. So try them out on whoever you can think of and enjoy.